Coach Husky is returning to coaching and he is taking over Old Dominion. He has five seasons to turn this team around and win a national championship. Let's go ahead and meet the team that he is starting with here in season number one. The 76 overall sophomore Hayden Wolf will be our starting quarterback headed into the first season and one of our top skilled position players on this team is 80 overall starting halfback Blake Watson. The receiving core is led by junior Allie Jennings but everyone after him on the depth chart are underclassmen so this receiver room has a lot of potential and a lot of room to grow over the next few seasons. Seasons. The offensive line doesn't look too hot minus a few spots, as left guard Tyron Hunt is our offensive captain for the team. Either the positions are solid or very weak on this line, so we will definitely be looking to upgrade all these positions ASAP, as our solid linemen we can rely on this year will be leaving us soon. I'm very excited about the defensive line, as we have a lot of young players with a lot of potential there, especially Alonzo Ford Jr. who's almost an 80 overall as a sophomore. The linebacking core is solid for us this season with a mix of underclassmen and upperclassmen, but Jason Henderson is the real star of this entire team and who the defense will be built around going forward. Our secondary is pretty solid as well headed into season number one, but once again it is all seniors with only one junior at the strong safety position. Now that we've taken a look at our current roster, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the players that might be on our future roster. We'll be quickly going over the top five recruits on our board that I feel are crucial for us to land this season. First up we have five star receiver Jamal Oliver. Now I know I said we had a young receiving core, but I'm never we're gonna turn down the possibility of the number three receiver in the nation. We said our O-line needs help and these next two prospects are going to do just that as we have targeted four-star tackle Matt Smith and his teammate from the same offensive line, three-star Lance Thompson, already had us on his list to start the season. Three-star quarterback Larry Smith is the 14th ranked quarterback in the country and I feel like he would be a great addition to build around for the next few years. And our secondary is very upperclassman heavy so we have three-star strong safety Jeff Vincent, who's the fifth ranked in the country at his position. So now it's actually time to start our first season here with Old Dominion, and ESPN is saying this is a snoozer calling us cellar dwellers. Thankfully, Lee Corso has us projected winning this game against FCS Southeast, so let's see how we do in our first game of this dynasty. Southeast has won the toss, they have elected to kick, and season one is underway as James is set back to receive this at the two. He will take it out to the right side and he will be tackled around the 25. And here comes our offense for the very first time today and we're gonna open up with a pass and that'll be completed. Isaiah Page would pick up the first down as we're gonna go with a quarterback keeper here. And we're trying to get Hayden Wolf off to a hot start this game. We would be facing our first third down of the season. Hayden Wolf rolling out on the run. He's gonna find Allie Jennings and he will pick up the first down. So this drive would stay live inside the 20 Hayden Wolf is gonna take it this time on his feet and that would set us up with a first and goal opportunity and he'd take it in for a touchdown it felt good for our offense to get on the board first and it was time to see if our defense now could get a stop against Southeast it was gonna be a long day for us though if we kept giving up big run plays like that last one but thankfully we got them to their first third down of the day and Lewis Bates would break a tackle and pick up the first down we would force them to another third down though right before the end of the first quarter and with that stop, we would force them to settle for three points. We would get another chance here on offense. It would go to Blake Watson on the first play, but unfortunately, our starting halfback would go down with an injury. We would check up on him later as Keyshawn Wicks was now in the game for us. And on third and eight, we would be going to him on a halfback screen. He would have some blocks and he would just barely pick up the first. With a fresh set of downs, now Hayden Wolf would drop back and he'd find Zach Koontz wide open into Southeast territory. And our sophomore quarterback has been off to a hot start today both on the air and on the ground as he's gonna take this one to the house for a touchdown and don't even ask me what type of celebration that is and now with an 11 point lead we were looking to force a three and out and they would just barely pick up the first but finally we'd have them to another third down after two incompletions from Chaz Patterson and we almost had him for a sack and he would complete this but thankfully they would come up short backed up all the way to the two our offense now only had less than a minute and a half to move down the field we now had a third and five and we were just trying to pick up the first. Jordan Bly would get wide open on the out route and slip one tackle. And with 50 seconds remaining, we have a real chance to at least get into field goal range as Peter Kikwata picks up the first. And that big play to our tight end would get us into field goal range and Wolf is going to take a sack and that's going to take us right back out of field goal range. That is the last thing we wanted our sophomore quarterback to do and now he's going to follow it up with an interception. That gives Southeast just enough time with three timeouts left to try to get into 
into field goal range themselves. As that play would use up six seconds, Chaz Patterson back to throw and he's gonna take a sack. Like I said, we have a lot of potential with this defensive line and we're gonna come up big on third down again. That would bring us to the end of the first half here and we are feeling pretty good with a 14 to three lead. However, we did get some bad news in the locker room though and that is Blake Watson is out for the season with a torn shoulder. So it looks like we're just gonna have to make do without our star sophomore halfback now as we're not gonna have him again until the start of next season. Their offense is already moving better than I would like to start the second half and we're gonna get a big sack. And bringing the heat has seemed to be the key to slowing down Chaz Patterson in this offense but it's not gonna work here as Lewis Bates will pick up the first down. I'd hate for us to give up a touchdown at all to this FCS team as Chaz Patterson will escape the pocket here but takes a hit. But it's looking more and more likely that they might find the end zone on this drive as Scott Curtis has the first down. Eventually they find themselves in a first and goal position and Chaz Patterson would take it in. The triple option gets them their first touchdown of the day. So now it was only a four point lead and we were facing a third down and a horrible throw there from Hayden Wolf and that would force us to punt the ball away. Southeast had the chance to take the lead on this drive and it would start with a Chaz Patterson quarterback draw. Our defense just couldn't seem to get a stop as we had Chaz Patterson looking confused back in the pocket but he would end up turning this into a huge gain. And now headed into the fourth quarter, this situation was starting to get serious for us so we needed a stop on third and goal and we'd get it. The defense was super pumped up because we managed to hold them to only three points and we still had a one point lead with the hopes of running the clock out on this drive. We were going to have to rely heavily on the sophomore Keyshawn Wicks this drive but it would be up to Hayden Wolf on this play as he would connect with Allie Jennings for first down. FCS would use their second timeout and now we just needed to keep pounding the rock with our sophomore backup. With no timeouts left, one more first down with Keyshawn Wicks would seal the game and he would go ahead and pick it up on this play right here and then some extra yards with some broken tackles as Hayden Wolf would come out in victory formation and take a knee and although it was closer than we might have liked we would walk away with a one point victory over FCS Southeast. Hayden Wolf had some ups and downs but overall looked really solid in today's start but it does worry me that our defense gave up 197 offensive yards to FCS Southeast. We'll have a chance to redeem ourselves though as we have a game against FCS West coming up next week and slowly but surely our top five recruits on the board we have all made it onto their top school list. Dennis Ross the two-star cornerback as well is the first recruit scheduling a visit with us in week 14. We'll keep checking in periodically with our recruiting board to see how we're doing but for now our focus is going to be winning our next game against FCS West. So we will be starting out here on defense to start this game and we're going to start with a good stop. Hopefully this game isn't as close as the last one but it might be if we keep giving up plays like that. Mark Cooper dropping back for the first time today and it looks like he's gonna gash us. Already our defense isn't looking too great on this first drive and they keep sealing the edge on us on these tosses. We need better outside containment as finally we're gonna get a stop and at least we're gonna hold them to three on their first drive. First time out on offense today as their first possession took up over half of the first quarter and we'll pick up a first down. Hayden Wolf is looking to build off that solid performance he had in our first game against FCS Southeast and we're not only gonna be relying on his arm but we're gonna be relying a lot on his legs as well this season because if you remember junior halfback Blake Watson suffered a season ending injury last game so the inexperienced sophomore Kishan Wicks is filling in for him. It was the end of the first quarter and we were losing to FCS West but thankfully we changed that on the first play of the second quarter is that's Hayden Wolf's first passing touchdown of the season. So now it would be up to our defense to try to get a stop here again but we couldn't on this play. So the drive would stay alive for FCS West and Joe Thompson would find a wide open Dwayne Campbell. I don't even know where the closest defender was. And so just like that FCS West has taken the lead over us once again. Hayden Wolf was doing a good job though of moving us quickly down the field into their territory and it didn't take long at all for Hayden Wolf in our offense to answer right back with a touchdown. Our offense seemed much improved from last week and now our defense was stepping up. And if we could keep playing like this on both sides of the ball we would be a very dangerous team. Hayden Wolf was perfect on the day and would continue that streak with this pass to Allie Jennings and he would try to cap off this drive with a touchdown here on third down rolling out to the right and he didn't see anything he could take. So it wasn't a touchdown but we'd take our three and we got the ball to start the second half so hopefully we could put them away with a touchdown on this drive. But it wasn't looking like that would happen after this bad throw from Wolf. Coach Husky was aggressive though and he would go for it here on fourth down and that would be completed to Allie Jennings. Wolf just barely getting that pass off in time and Jennings just barely coming down with it. That gutsy play call was paying off though as we were getting closer to the 
end zone and Hayden Wolf was in trouble and he starts running backwards. And I don't know if we're even in field goal range, but it's a fake. He gets it off. Anthony Jr. has it. He's running. He has the first and the touchdown. No way we just pulled off the fake field goal for a touchdown. They were not expecting it in the least bit. And just like that, we would go up by two possessions. And now it was the defense's turn to come up with a stop. And Demarion James is going to come up with an interception and take this to the house. And we're just piling it on at this point. FCS West would get another shot with the ball here. And our defense would come out and we would force a three now. And so headed into the fourth quarter, FCS West was absolutely demoralized. This was the point in the game where we could really start getting Kishan Wicks some valuable experience. As we were going to use the sophomore to try to run out as much clock as we could on this drive. With just over a minute to go, FCS West wasn't even using their timeouts. And all we would have to do here is run one last play with Hayden Wolf, And that would seal this week two victory for us. As Hayden Wolf and this team looked a lot better than last week. Hayden Wolf looked even better this game with only three incompletions and no interceptions. And our defense looks so much better than they did last week. Now granted, our first two wins were against FCS teams. But I have a good feeling about this team headed into conference play next week.